Every year there are more shocking discoveries made in ancient Egypt. In 2023, space particles were used to find secrets in the Great Pyramid. A new sphinx was found, and that's only the tip of the iceberg. The Hieroglyphs of Abydos for years, the Temple of Abydos has been a source of conspiracy theories and speculation. There appears to be proof of ancient astronaut visitors etched into the walls. Abydos was one of the most important sacred cities in all of Egypt. It started as an acropolis for royalty during the First Dynasty, then evolved into a pilgrimage site for the worshippers of Osiris. Over the centuries, various pharaohs built various monuments, building their own mortuary temples and sanctuaries to gods. The Temple of Abydos supposedly has proof ancient aliens came in the 19th dynasty over 3,000 years ago. It was built in honor of Seti I, who ruled from 1290 until 1279 BC. Within the temple is a vast gallery with the cartouches of Seti's 76 dead predecessors. The gallery is known as the Abydos King List, since it appears to show every pharaoh who ruled Egypt going back to the very first. King Menes in 3200 BC. There is a place within the temple where a series of hieroglyphs appear to show alien vehicles. One of them looks like a helicopter, another looks like a submarine, one of them looks exactly like an alien spaceship, while two other hieroglyphs seem to be shaped like airplanes. A lot of people think the hieroglyphs are proof that Egyptians witness forms of advanced technology. Presumably they saw aliens using these vehicles. However, Egyptologists don't think that's true. The most popular theory recently put forward is that the hieroglyphs were re-carved at some point, creating vehicle-like symbols. Nobody truly knows the answers, though. And now for number 7. But first, it's shout-out time. I wanted to give a big thank you to Barnes Family 1128 for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries. The Pyramid Void in 2016 and 2017, modern technology revealed hidden voids inside the pyramids of Giza. Now it's 2023, and scientists are still trying to figure out the mysteries of the hollow voids. The researchers are part of a group called the Scan Pyramids Project. They not only identified cavities inside the Great Pyramid of Giza, but also in the other two pyramids as well. You might not have heard about the other voids, because the main pyramid gets all the attention. The void within the Great Pyramid is about 30 feet long and 6 feet wide. It is a huge and empty corridor that makes no sense. It doesn't appear to have anything in it, so it's more than likely not hiding a secret tomb. Then again, the void could be a passageway leading to another part of the pyramid that hasn't been found yet. And there, somewhere deeper, there could be an unknown tomb. Some have even suggested the void was used to stash the Ark of the Covenant, though there isn't any proof of that. In 2023, Egyptian authorities announced some new details about the void. Researchers used a technology called muon radiography to investigate the hollow space using cosmic ray particles. That's about as futuristic as it gets. Let me break down the science for you. A muon is a subatomic particle, kind of like an electron, only it's 200 times bigger and exists for several millionths of a second. These tiny particles are forever raining down from space. Cosmic objects produce immense energy from far away. The energy flies across the universe and hits the planet. Those cosmic rays hit the atmosphere and spray particles of muons onto the surface. In the time it took me to explain this, dozens of muons have already hit you in the head and passed through your body. What scientists are able to do is to look at the muons as they pass through the pyramids. By doing this, their detectors were able to accurately map the mystery void. They didn't find anything new, but did get a fascinating look at the empty space. So far, it's still just empty. It took months of data collecting to see the void, and sadly, it's still not revealing its secrets. The Gold Mummy Archaeologists have identified one of the oldest non-royal corpses ever found in Egypt. The corpses of a man named Hacker Shepes. His mummified remains found wrapped in gold. South of Cairo, experts were investigating the vast burial complex known as Saqqara when they made the discovery. Countless tombs have been found here. You may have heard of Saqqara before. It's one of the most famous places in Egypt, home to buried royalty and lots of mummies. 
Archaeologists unveiled a 50-foot shaft, and way down in the dark pit beneath the desert sands were four ancient tombs. One of the tombs belonged to a secret keeper named Mary. He was a performer of religious rituals. Another tomb belonged to a judge and a writer named Fetek. The third belonged to a priest by the name of Kum Jedef. The fourth belonged to our golden friend, Hakishapis. This is an amazing piece of Egyptian history because these four people each played a unique role in society 4,500 years ago. Down at the bottom of this shaft were laid to rest four totally ordinary citizens of ancient Egypt. They lived between the 25th and 22nd centuries BC. Archaeologists don't know much about their individual lives, such as what they like to do or how they spent their spare time, but inscriptions in their tombs did reveal their professions, which is very exciting. In the case of Hekashepis, his profession isn't clear. He was definitely wealthy, hence his body being wrapped in gold upon his death. To be fair, that might have been his entire profession. He may have just been a wealthy aristocrat who lived in the days when the Pyramid of Giza was brand new. While older mummies have been found, his is believed to be the oldest complete mummy that wasn't royalty found wreathed in gold. The Lost Queen's Wine Sealed jars of wine have just been discovered in the tomb of one of the most powerful women in human history. She may have been the first female pharaoh to rule Egypt 5,000 years ago. Let's see if you can guess her name before I get to it first. The new research was done by scientists with the University of Vienna. They discovered a monumental tomb complex in Egypt's Abydos Desert. The tomb complex was made specifically for one very important woman, yet it also includes the burials of 41 servants. This great queen was so important that she had almost 50 of her courtiers and attendants buried alongside her. The servants were given modest tombs, while the queen was buried in an extraordinary example of Egyptian engineering. As far as archaeologists are aware, Queen Meritneith was the only woman that had her own monumental tomb at the royal cemetery in Abydos. She was ruler of Egypt around 3000 BC, though researchers know very little about her. To be brutally honest, they aren't even positive she was a queen. There is almost nothing in recorded history with her name on it. She lived 500 years before the pyramids were built, really at the dawn of Egyptian society. Why are the experts calling her a queen if they don't know for sure? It's because all the evidence points to her being a pharaoh. Nobody's buried with 41 servants without being some type of royalty. The newest excavations revealed hundreds of jars of wine buried with the woman, some of them still sealed. How would you feel about cracking open a jar of 5,000-year-old royal wine? The Sunken Treasures Experts have just pulled up new treasures and secrets from a beautiful sunken temple off the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. The Sunken Temple comes from Egypt's ancient past. It was once a place of cultic worship. People from the city of Thonis, Heracleon, gathered at the temple to give praise to the god Amun. Amun was king of the universe and supreme ruler of the Egyptian pantheon. Not only was the temple visited by ordinary folk, but it was also important to kings. New pharaohs journey to the Temple of Amun to receive their power from the King of Gods. It was an epic ceremony, kind of like a coronation, but way cooler. You might be wondering what the temple is doing in the Mediterranean Sea. To understand that, I need to take you through the history of what was once Egypt's biggest port. Long before the founding of Alexandria in 331 BC, Thonis Heracleon was the most important Egyptian city on the Mediterranean. Trade was brought in through the port from civilizations across the known world. It's because of the immense wealth here that the Temple of Amun was able to thrive. Because of its closeness to Greece and Rome, the city also became a hub for people of other cultures. Not far from the Temple of Amun is another submerged temple dedicated to a goddess from a different civilization. The Sanctuary of Aphrodite was found by Frank Godillo's team of marine archaeologists east of Amun's temple. Even during the days of the pharaohs, Greeks settled on the coast and built sanctuaries to their precious gods. The sanctuary was likely built between 664 
and 525 BC. The team also discovered a few Greek weapons buried at the bottom of the sea, suggesting mercenaries were present. These new discoveries have revealed just how complex the ancient city was. There were areas populated by Greek warriors with Greek temples. Then there were places strictly for Egyptians to worship their gods. It's amazing to think what the city would look like today if the whole thing hadn't fallen into the sea. As the sea level rose 2,000 years ago, Thonis Heracleion started to flood. Then a series of earthquakes created tidal waves, decimating the coastline. Within a few years, the whole city was sucked into the Mediterranean. During the most recent underwater excavations, actual treasure from the temple treasury was discovered. They found alabaster containers that once held perfumes used in ceremonies for a moon. Archaeologists also brought up gold jewelry and other ritual instruments. The Second Sphinx the Great Sphinx that stands guard before the Pyramids of Giza may have once had a twin. A second Sphinx has allegedly been discovered that was once the exact copy of the famous statue. Archaeologists have been mocking the discovery since it was announced. The man behind the announcement is Egyptian tourism official Rida Abdel Halim. He told local media that a statue nearly identical to the famous Sphinx was discovered in the area of the pyramids near Cairo. Rida said the discovery was confirmed by independent researchers at Zagazig University. If true, the discovery could change Egyptian history. This statue could be the original counterpart to the most recognizable colossus in the world. But where is it? Unfortunately, nobody knows where it is because nobody knows if it even exists. Famous Egyptologist Zahi Hawass called it a publicity stunt. Zahi oversaw the pyramids for almost 20 years. He's the biggest name in Egyptology in the world. He said the tourism official is lying. This is not the first time someone has come forward to claim a second Sphinx exists. Rumors have been circulating about another Sphinx for centuries. The tourism official kind of botched his own case since he didn't come up with any proof. He simply said it's there, you just can't see it. That's not a very good argument. But there could be another Sphinx somewhere. The one we all know and love was built around 2500 BC to look like Pharaoh Khafre. It would totally make sense that other pharaohs built Sphinxes in their image too. A lot has happened over the last 4500 years. It's possible the other Sphinxes are destroyed and will never be found. If there was another Sphinx, where do you think it would be? Let me know in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. The Pyramid of Sahore Archaeologists have finally cleared the way into the depths of a pyramid that almost nobody has ever heard of. It's one of the oldest and most overlooked pyramids in Egypt. This majestic beauty is the Pyramid of Sahori, built in the 25th century BC. It was constructed as a tomb for Pharaoh Sahori of the 5th dynasty. Although not as grand or as exciting as the Pyramid of Khufu built a hundred years earlier, it was equally as important to history. Building this pyramid set off a string of events that saw pyramids take over the North African country. Those who came after Sahori each wanted their own pyramid. This resulted in Abu Zia being dotted with funerary monuments. In the 4th dynasty, the construction of pyramids was immense. There weren't as many, but they were built way bigger. In the 5th dynasty, Sahori began the trend of building smaller, more vividly decorated pyramids. This made it easier for pharaohs to quickly complete their own monuments. The issue with the pyramid is, that it's in a horrible state of preservation. When it was first investigated by archaeologists in the 19th century, they didn't bother much with it. It was too ruined for them to easily excavate and explore. It wasn't until this year that British Egyptologist John Perring cleaned the entrance and descended into the pyramid. John has now revealed badly damaged chambers within the structure that were previously inaccessible. He didn't find much, but at least someone's finally revealed them. The Smiling Sphinx how much cooler would it be if the Great Sphinx had a big smile on its face? I think it would be pretty cool, although it would definitely change the mood. Far from the unsmiling Sphinx at Giza, archaeologists just found a grinning Sphinx with dimples. The smiling Sphinx was found near Hathor Temple, about 300 miles from Cairo. The ancient temple is home to the most famous celestial map of the ancient world, the Dendera Zodiac. The map was blasted out of the temple by French treasure thief Sebastien Louis Saulnier in 1922. Egypt wants it back, but the Louvre Museum in Paris refuses to return it. But who needs the greatest Egyptian map ever 
when you have a smiling sphinx. Egyptologists think the new sphinx was made in the image of a Roman emperor. It was found within a tomb near the temple complex, alongside a Roman steel covered in hieroglyphic script. Unfortunately, the discovery is so new that I don't have any more information. Researchers still need to decipher the Roman steel and fully excavate the Sphinx. Once the steel is deciphered, more information about the Sphinx and its Roman inspiration will be revealed. Maybe they'll find out what the Sphinx was so happy about. What secrets do you think 2024 will reveal in Egypt? Let me know your theories in the comments and thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe and come back soon for all the latest archaeological news.